Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey and the Shadow Environment and Climate Change hey. Minister Greg Hunt. Well, look, uh, thanks all of you for being here. And uh, I'm going to say a few words, then I'm going to ask Greg to say a few words, then Joe will say a few words, then obviously we'll take questions. I suppose the first point to make uh, is to reiterate the Productivity Commission statement of a few weeks ago uh, that this is a world first. Uh, there is no other country anywhere on the face of the earth which is attempting to implement an economy-wide carbon tax or emissions trading scheme. Uh, the other point to make at the outset is that while we are proposing to reduce our emissions by 5% by 2020, the Chinese are forecast to increase theirs by 500% uh, and the Indians are forecast to increase theirs by 350%. So I think it's very important that all of this is put into an appropriate uh, international context. Now, what's crystal clear from the Prime Minister's announcement today is that millions of Australians will be worse off, even under the government's own modelling. And even under the government's own forecasting, we will not actually cut our emissions with this carbon tax emissions trading scheme. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the point of all of this uh, if millions of Australians are going to be worse off and we are not actually going to cut our emissions? Um, this is a, a Labor Green carbon tax and it's going to drive up prices, threaten jobs and do nothing at all for the environment. I just want to take people through this uh, whole point about people uh, not being better off. Um, the government boasts that 90% of Australians will receive compensation and that 40% of households will be overcompensated. Well, I think all Australians are capable of translating polyspeak. Uh, what that means is that 10% of households will get absolutely nothing uh, and that 60% of households will either be worse off or it will be line ball. If you go through the government's uh, own figuring, uh, they say that the impact on prices will cost the average household $9.90 a week uh, and that the compensation on average will be $10.10 .10 a week. So even on the government's own figuring, there is a 20 cent a week margin for error. Uh, and this is from a government which is monumentally bad at getting anything at all right. Uh, just if you look at uh, the cameos, uh, uh, there are many, many cameos of uh, households and family types that will be worse off. Uh, but the one that particularly struck me, a single income family on $65,000 a year, that's to say a single income family on below average weekly earnings with one child under five is worse off. And this is on the government's own figuring. Uh, and I think we can safely assume uh, that the government is building the best case assumptions and scenarios uh, into their own figuring. So I think what the government is going to find, having published all of this, is that it suffers uh, the death of a thousand cameos uh, as so many people look at these figures and decide that they're not going to be better off at all. And then, of course, there's the fact that this tax is just going to go up and up and up as time goes by. Uh, it's going to go up uh, very significantly uh, as a tax. Uh, then it's going to go uh, to $29 a tonne, uh, assuming that the government can accu accurately read uh, the state of the international carbon market uh, in, uh, in four years' time. Uh, but even on the government's own figuring, uh, it's going to go up to $29 a tonne, and it just goes up and up and up uh, from there. But as I said, the really interesting thing uh, for a government that is uh, anxious to uh, present this as uh, such an incredible environmental challenge is that even on the government's own figures, <coughs> uh, our emissions are substantially increasing, notwithstanding the carbon tax come emissions trading scheme. Um, even with carbon pricing, our emissions are going to go up from 578 million tonnes to 621 million tonnes, leaving 
an abatement task of just over 100 million tonnes, which is going to have to be met by purchasing permits from abroad. Now, uh, this is an extraordinary business. Uh, under the government's own proposals, we are going to have to send, or Australian businesses are going to have to s spend more than $3 billion a year <coughs> purchasing abatements from abroad. Uh, and we all know the potential for fraud, the potential for scamming. I mean, even the European Emissions Trading Scheme uh, has been riddled with scamming, uh, and that's in a culture where uh, administrative probity uh, is held in wide respect, uh, let alone some of the other uh, countries where uh, uh, carbon credits will no doubt be available. But that brings us to another problem, uh, and that is the fiscal problem. Uh, now, this isn't obvious uh, from the figures that we've seen today because they only cover the uh, current forward estimates. But if uh, up to 50% of these permits can be bought abroad, uh, that is going to have a dramatic impact uh, on the government's revenue. It won't, however, significantly bring down households' costs. So in order to compensate households, there will have to be uh, just as much money going to households from government, but the government won't be getting anything like uh, the revenue that it's, uh, that it's expecting. So I think there is a real fiscal hole uh, beyond the forward estimates period uh, under what's uh, been announced today. So I ask the question, uh, what's the point of all of this? Uh, this is a redistribution pretending to be compensation. Uh, it's a tax increase pretending to be an environmental policy. Uh, it's socialism masquerading as environmentalism. That's what this is. It's very interesting that as part of the compensation package, uh, uh, tax rates actually go up. Uh, the 15% tax rate goes up to 19%. Uh, the 30% tax rate goes up to 33%. Um, the government calls this a reform, but this is actually the first time since the 1980s uh, that marginal tax rates have been increased. So it's no reform and it's a complete betrayal uh, of the uh, reforming mindset that the last good Labor government, the Hawke-Keating Labor government, uh, brought to uh, policy. So uh, it's a package which is all economic pain uh, for no environmental gain. I think this uh, package is going to compound the trust problem which has dogged the Prime Minister uh, ever since she politically assassinated Kevin Rudd uh, and has dogged the Prime Minister uh, ever since she was deceptive about the carbon tax uh, before uh, the last election. Uh, I think this package certainly sets up uh, the next election to be a referendum on the carbon tax. And I make this point in closing. Uh, she did say six days before the last election there will be no carbon tax under the government I lead for a reason. She said it for this reason that she knows that under any carbon tax regime, everyone will pay. And uh, I make the final point, uh, if this is such a good package, why won't the Prime Minister fight an election on it? Why won't she fight an election on it soon? And certainly there should be no carbon tax without the people of Australia having their chance to have their say on it.